party people. I am DJ Maximilian. I know y'all listening. I see you over there. Come on, come on. We talked about this. We work during the day. We dream at night. Welcome home, Terry. My brother. One day, he was just gone. What did you do when he left? Quit school, got a job, had to take care of my grandmother. <laughs> what do you dream about? Why should I get my wills, man? People gonna know my name. We can do better than this. Wow, looking good, brother. So what's up, man? You ready to work or what? My man. Hey, where'd you get this? How long you been saving for them turntables? A long time. Well, let's get them quick. You try to fix everything, but because of you, everything is broken. I don't know what to do now. The only time I feel good is when I'm behind the wheels. Did we say we're starting early? Uh, 10 minutes, you said, just to, so we could oh, We see. did, right? We did. I couldn't remember if I had uh, <laughs> if I had mentioned that. No worries. You look like you're in my old Carroll Gardens apartment, Paul. I, I bet. And out the window, it's it probably be. your old street. What's, what street are you on? Sackett. Okay. Yeah. You're, where, are you between like Clinton and Carroll or something? Or, or Clinton rather and, and, and President? No, wait. His president goes the other way. Uh, you got Smith. You got Smith. Um, yeah, Smith. And is I Smith. was on Smith between Union and President. So then it's Court, and then yeah. Clinton. Yeah. Yeah, you're just one one block over. Yeah. Man, I was there in '87 though, so uh -huh. I don't know. It's a little. Yeah. Little, yeah. Back in the day, as they um, <laughs> as they say, yeah. Where if you weren't Italian or oh. something like that, you should just probably be careful. Oh, oh yeah. I used to never come down, you know, I grew up um, on Henry Street and oh. but in in the Heights. And it was like, don't go past Smith Street, you know, was the, and even people from Cobble Hill, it was like, you know, a dividing line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I was, I mean, there was no, there were, the area hadn't become, I left in 93. Uh -huh. I still wasn't gentrified. Right. Uh, but, but, yeah. Um, there was some tiny bit of stuff going on finally little one or two places on smith between like union all the way down to atlantic it was just essentially you know uh occasional social clubs and right right uh like you know a couple of uh i don't know i mean there was a supermarket there was like a key yeah. food or something but it was like there was nothing there were just these little uh, bodegas on occasion, you know, it was just nothing. And then you get back a few years later and it was like, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's a, a different world. world. No, it, now it's, uh, you know, do you want yeah. uh, Parmesan on that? You know, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think actually it's, it's kind of hit hard times again. Right. Yeah, it has. There are a yeah. lot of shuttered stores. Yeah. It's, uh, what are before COVID, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, on my block especially, there are a lot of restaurants that are still fighting to keep the outdoor space and keep it hot outside and keep you know keep it warm for people. But it's it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, I get down there, you know, once twice a month, uh -huh. um, and um, generally I see my old lady in uh, Park Slope. She's yeah. like, she goes back. So yeah, she's she's been there a long time, but she's. So I haven't been getting over to Carroll Gardens, but uh, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of a lot of memories from those years, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're we're just upstate. It's like the it's the best of both worlds, you know. I, I think I was saying my wife yeah. and I were looking to get a place upstate. We were. It's just the best of both worlds, Brooklyn and upstate. You know, it's just. I like, know. There's like a through yeah. line here. Yeah, and yeah. it's like Europe's. You're, where are you now? Like roughly. 
uh, where am I in Brooklyn? You're right now in Brooklyn though, right? Yeah, I'm in uh, on Sackett Street. You're right there. Okay, I didn't. Okay, yeah, because uh, but I know you're up in the Woodstock area, and yes. I don't well, know. If, yeah. Do you have like ties? Because I know you premiered Wheels, the film, yeah. the yeah. indie film that you made, and that we're going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, it was it was premiered at Woodstock Film Festival. It did. Yeah. Last 18, year, right? Eighteen. To oh, two years 18. ago. Yeah. I'm sure I was there. You know, we probably just like. We crossed paths yeah i go like every year because i have friends up here now i live here yeah uh just about 20 minutes from woodstock if that and then um um really cross the river but um yeah all those people are you know friendly with the with mayra and all the folks there um i've been going for a while yeah because i have friends i've had friends up here and then i just started it would be an excuse to come up right right yeah, it's 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 so great. Yeah, Mira was so nice to us, and so the ex- executive producer, my friend on the film, Jamin O'Brien, he's produced a few films that went to Woodstock. So he introduced us to Mira, and then um, she loved the film, and then we we ended up winning best narrative feature 2018, and um, yeah, as well as the audience award. So it was our first screening first premiere you know it was our premiere and we were and we won and so it was a it was a incredible way to start off yeah did you uh refresh my memory did you guys yeah. get a brooklyn or new york city festival uh yes we we played um harlem harlem international oh right festival. that's a good one and we won that right. one as well um it was funny because brooklyn and harlem were both at the same time. And I opted to go with Harlem because Arn Star is from Harlem. And he, it, so it was a packed house. I mean- That makes it, sense. What a great night, yeah. And um, yeah, so we did that and- um, Also, I think that the Harlem International Film Festival yeah. uh, has uh, more of a commitment to filmmakers of color. Yeah, urban kind of stories. I'm yeah. gonna say, it's my impression. I could be wrong. Then Brooklyn, De- I, I feel like they do, and they broadened it to do more international films, but international color as well. So yeah, it's interesting because the I mean they call it it's an international festival, but yeah. um, you know, so is Brooklyn, and for, for uh-huh. many years the Brooklyn festival film festival is called the brooklyn international film festival and they dropped the international part about six or seven years ago um so which was probably wise but uh-huh. they still show quite a few because the uh the founders the guys that own the festival and run it yeah. are, well one of them marco is a european so yeah i don't know yeah, yeah. now yeah. sorry to yeah. These are the things that preoccupy me, Paul. So. Oh, this is great. This is, I didn't. I, I was going to be like, are we starting? We're just getting to know each oh, other. Oh, this is the way the show goes. It just sort yeah. of like slides into yeah. the, you know, into the podcast or what have you. Uh, we're going to be joined in a matter of moments by yeah. your cast, which I'm very excited yeah. about. You have uh, Arn Star, as you mentioned, who is yeah. the lead character, Max. Yeah. Right. Arn and then we have uh, Shirley... Rodriguez, who plays uh, Liza, who, right? Is it Liza? Yep, Liza. Shirley is, Rodriguez will be put is like Liza. Yep. Max is a uh, love interest, and she is a uh, um, character in of, her, uh, in of herself. I mean, you know, not, not purely defined by Max's attention. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's a strong character. And then we are also, I think, I'm very excited, of course, Lee Canonis, who, yep. you know, many people um, who go back may remember uh who's been around in the hip-hop scene and uh uh i don't know i I guess it's the hip-hop scene because the hip-hop scene wasn't just music as we know it's it's fashion yeah it's street fashion it's also an extension of that uh goes back to the early days of hip-hop which was also besides you know beatbox and all that but it was also tagging and graffiti art right so Exactly. And Lee was right in the middle of all that. Oh yeah, Lee was right there. And and interesting, interesting enough, um, Arnstar's father, right, his late father, was part of the part of the Steady crew. 
and he amazing knew, lee knew him and so <laughs> It's, when I when I called Lee to do the movie, Lee said, "Wait, Arn Star, that's Kippy D's son." That's said, amazing. Yes, it, it, it 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 was like uh, brought the worlds together. Oh my gosh! And yeah. I get you know it's a small. I mean, let's face it, it's a small yeah. world. No matter what you, you know, I'm sure most people, especially on the coast, whatever coast you were on, you knew everybody. Right. right? Your right. paths were going to cross, and you word got around if you were any good. Oh yeah. I'm sure, but you know. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and, and and then we have the uh, you know Charlie Ahern has been kind of a friend for many. He's like one of my first guests going back when I started this thing. Oh, you cool. know, but you got to get Charlie Ahern on. <laughs> yeah. and that's yeah. a guy who's still so interested in the street art, you know, and music. Mm -hmm. to, and then he's probably I'm guess well into his sixties at this stage, oh, but yeah. he's still still extremely interested in that. So. Um, so you, you, oh, looks like we're being joined by somebody. Who's our mystery guest? <laughs> um, oh, I love it. It's funny. Arn Star is asking me for the link again. So, I'm oh, okay. Well, time. yeah, we'll wait. Don't, no problem. Let's see. Did you want Hi, you're Shirley, I suppose. Hey. How you doing? It's, Hi. Yeah, How are it's, you? it's pronounced Shirley. Shirley. Thank you for yeah, no I was worries, wondering. Adam. About How are that. you? Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's so nice good. to meet you, Shirley. I, yeah, as a matter of fact, I was gonna too. I was gonna ask you if you ever went by Shirod. No. <laughs> can I can I start that? Maybe it will take and you'll have a like a new nickname. Yeah. Or, what what is Shirod? Oh, oh, you're talking about um like my first and last I'm just name trying together. To, yeah. You know, for some reason, I thought you like were going like it was like a restaurant or something because I or a place because I thought of like Shy Town. You know, so I'm yeah. like, OK, maybe I, maybe it's some <laughs> maybe. Well, it, it lends itself because it kind of your first yeah. name kind of kind of uh, moves right into the second name, Sherrod or something like yeah, that. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think I, I'm I'm just going to say try it out. Let me know. You can have it. You don't have to give me credit if it takes <laughs> just. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. You know, um, like growing up and, and a lot of people call me Shirls. So for a while, I kind of oh. thought like, should I use that? But I just like, you know, I kind of liked how to just kind of keep emphasizing my name and, and whatever, you know. Sure. Well, what it's a pretty you, name. And we're, we're oh, Orange Star is on. Thank you. Where, 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 are you, where are you right now? Where are you lo located? In Jersey. Oh, where? All my family's Oh, uh, West New York. Okay. Where, where's your family That's from? like right across the river, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, uh, my family, uh, my mom and dad were both grew up in New Jersey. My mm -hmm. dad was from actually Newark. Ooh, nice. My I mom, was, uh, yeah. I was born in Jersey City, but I, like, I know the area a little, you know. I wasn't sure. raised there, but yeah. Right. So, so yeah, you were saying? Oh, no. And, and my mother was further down in like the Monmouth County area, so not that close. <laughs> It's now considered commuter, but back then it was like, you know, rural. Mm -hmm. So my aunt is still down. All my, you know, cousins and aunts and uncles are still out in New Jersey, spread out. Yeah. But my parents kind of decided to yeah. be rebels back in the day and moved to New York City. So <laughs> that's what happened. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. What's Arnstar doing? And is, are you going to, uh, it's a very, very attractive logo, but. Uh, oh. oh, there he is. Here we go. Oop, there it is. Oh, hey. Hey. oh they got the virtual hey. background going. Lane, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the face we know. There Adam. He is. Nice to meet you. Yes, yes. Paul Shirley, what's going on, y'all? Nothing, you? man. Here, vibing out. Yeah, well, <laughs> get rid of this virtual more. background. I Paul, I never said hi to you, but hi, I'm Paul. Saying hi to you as well. How are you? <laughs> this is this is a reunion for everybody, I guess. Right? When was oh, last time? Yeah. Yeah. When was last time you all were together? Together? Feels film. <laughs> wow. yeah. No, that's what it feels like. Because these guys saw each other more often than I did. Because I um. I was doing other things and then I had my son and they were kind of uh, going around the film festivals and stuff. Um, so I couldn't really join them. Um, so guys, guys, I haven't seen you together in, in, a, in a minute. I mean, you guys have. Yeah. It's been so long. 
And we, um, we were together in Harlem, uh, Lee, myself, and Arnstar, and Charlie Ahern. Yeah. Wow, yeah, Char I'm sure. Uh, uh, Lee, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Adam. I'm thrilled. I know, I'm sure Paul was telling you how much uh, I've actually been wanting you on for a long time. I've been doing this, well, more of an audio podcast, but now that I kind of also doing video because people are stuck home on their couches. So I figure, let them look at this, let them give them the gift <laughs> that, that is my face. You know? <laughs> You're just uh, all about giving gifts, Adam, at this point. Like, right. I, I gave call you santa claus i mean it's close to the holidays right i'll why, take it yeah <laughs> sure uh, i gave shirley her a new nickname which yeah tyrod sounds legit to me though for sure and and lee, I, see you. I didn't even know um i didn't even know i didn't see lee at first lee what's going on man i didn't mean to leave you out of the greetings Bless yeah i didn't you, see either you just popped on what's oh, okay. going on guys <laughs> what's up star <laughs> what's up shirley <laughs> hey Excited to meet you guys and see okay. you guys, you know, again. Yes. This is awesome. This is a really nice thing to be able to do uh, uh, is to kind of provide a platform for you for like a cast like this to have a reunion, you know, and uh, I'm so grateful that uh, that Paul contacted me and told me about wheels. And, uh, you know, we're, we can talk a little bit about it because, you know, we're all here and uh, uh, it, it, we you now just to or sorry you're in in Harlem right now. Yeah, I'm in the okay. city. I just got back. I was in LA for a little while, but I'm back in the city. Well, it's safer here, and probably the air quality. I you can rarely say this from it being in New York City. Probably the air quality in New York City is better. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, something I, new. I mean, yeah, it's different. Um, on both sides, you know, when the um pandemic first happened, they showed like the air quality clean up in LA so I hope that um you know it didn't get polluted so fast and I, I kind of can attest that the traffic went down and things like that so um you know either way it's two big cities so you got to just be careful regardless as far right, as this. right we're, good good advice Lee where are you I'm in New York in my town I'm in Brooklyn actually so okay yeah yeah I can uh, I can definitely attest to New York over the left coast and why the air quality is much better here. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I have a kid who's actually just a few feet away from here. I'm I, I actually just north of the city. I I kind of escaped. Uh, I don't want to use the word abandoned because I didn't abandon. I'm lived in New York City <laughs> all my life. So, but um, I decided to kind of escape for, I didn't want to go through another quarantine. I felt a little bit like I needed a break. So, and my, my teenager is here, but he's going to Los Angeles in a few days because his mom is out there. So mm. I'm going to be very, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be relying even more on, I may be asking for more of these Zoom. Uh, Zoom sessions because I'm going to be all by myself. That's what I'm saying. Stuck yeah. up here. Right. I'm actually not too far from the Woodstock area where you guys had also your big premiere, festival yeah. premiere. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys all been happy? Are you, you have you done festivals before, film festivals? Or is that a new thing? Arn, you are you want to go on or um yeah, I mean, relatively to me, like I don't know, Paul, if that was that your first time? Because that was my first time doing everything, like as far as going to film festivals and just discovering. That was a whole world of discovery that I was, um, you know, blessed to be a part of, thanks to Paul. And just um, just being able to be kind of, you know, um, on a roller coaster that, that keeps going up. Like, it was just fun. It was super fun. And um, just how to, I think I went to, one before that, it was, um, what's, what's the one they do um, in Salt Lake City? A uh, Sundance. Sundance. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, Sundance. that's the yeah. one in, uh, yeah, Utah, that that little Yeah, festival. what's the big deal that everybody wants to make? <laughs> that's <funny>. yeah. <laughs> Sundance. I, so I, I did that one time before, but like, I didn't get the fullest experience as far as being there the whole time, but I went for um, a, a previous film that I had, I had shot right before. Oh. Mm -hmm. Roxanne, I mean, Roxanne, Roxanne, which was right before this film right here, Wheels. And, um, you know, same energy as far as the people, as far as what we came together for. So that was kind of a continuation. So thanks to Paul, thanks to Wheels, I was able to really get the full, like, you know, tour, tourism. We went to Canada. Where, where, where we went, Paul? 
We went to Canada. We went to uh, Bend, Oregon. We went to uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania. Yeah, it was, I, you know, I hadn't done many festivals before. I had been to Sundance, um, I want to say in the early 2000s, uh, on, on a job, actually. But oh. I hadn't been there with, <laughs> with a film. Um, and I went to South by Southwest with a film in 2006 that yeah. I was a cameraman on a, a documentary feature. Right. Um, but besides that, uh, Woodstock was such like such a great way to start the whole festival circuit. And just it just felt great to be around so many people that, you know, are like minded and just want to tell stories. And yeah, it, it's. And it's you're right. You're you're kind of like running around the region because you know it's in different towns and it's mm -hmm. now Lee. Back back in the day when Charlie made Wild Style, Ooh. which you're one of the. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, and by the way, just to show you, I'm pretty dedicated. I also this is one of my favorites. Yes, of course, downtown. Oh, I love that, <laughs> yeah, guys. If you haven't seen that, make sure you see it uh lee's in it uh but uh, did you back then the whole festival i mean there wasn't like there is now where every town has like 20 film festivals did you did you do any festivals with back with wild Sal? no we, we we didn't the first the festival that i i could say that we went to was 47th street and broadway that's where it was <laughs> because you know, the film had just debuted yeah. uh, the night before and i went by the theater i drove uh, I drove right by the theater and I was scared out of my skin because there was a line wrapping around the block in the rain. And I, I, it was the first time that I had, I had experienced the film from that perspective of the, the, the results of the film. And I didn't realize that they were, you know, I didn't even know anything about marketing and, and promotional, you know, uh, right. Technique, you know, uh, so, um, it was just a big splash, flash in the pan for me, and then uh, and then I realized like it was taking hold, and I, obviously you know forty years later it's a cult classic, um, with a lot of great intentions in it, and uh, some few good actors that should have moved on, um, but didn't. But the film is great, you know. It's uh, it was a great experience. Well, there's kind I gotta of gotta see that. Say I gotta say see them. I want to see them. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we could especially do, um, Wild Style. I want to see that one. Well, I gotta That's... say, I, Pink and I, you know, you know, Lady Pink, the painter. Yeah. Um, we're not as convincing as you and OnStar were on this film because you guys had such great chemistry, and Pink and I also had great chemistry, but we were just so like two magnets that you try to put together, and they kind of like shuffle. You guys were just so revealing and convincing and i loved watching you both in this film yeah. uh, thank, thank you you want to know something funny about about lady pink um which is really cool because i didn't even know she was in that film either but i did the get down on netflix and um they contacted her to help do like the graffiti artwork and stuff so then when i think it was when the second part of the whole like uh the the show was going to be released i reached out to her because you know we were in the same world like with the with the whole with, with the show and i i was able to reach out to her and have her like uh I, I bought this like little train uh like uh like an actual toy train but like a really good one that i found like in some little spot like where they sell paint shot uh you know those spray paints and everything yeah. in like this yeah, in yeah. the city yeah um, and I contacted her and I asked her like to help me if she would, you know, be so kind to, you know, um, obviously like a paid gig, of course, because, you know, the work is, is, is important to, you know, be compensated for. Mm -hmm. um, and she was able to, to do it for me and she, she did the graffiti work on it and, you know, it was like my gift to like Baz Luhrmann and his wife. Um, mm -hmm. Catherine Martin. So that's kind of like how I was able to talk to Lady Pink. And I felt so honored. I was like, wow, this is so crazy. Like she's so, you know, yeah. like in the that's world, fun. like known, you know. So yeah. it's really cool to get to know you too, Lee. Like this is awesome. This is like a weird circle, you know. Wheel. Yeah. Well, I came up with a saying the other day. Uh New York is a small town and the world is even smaller. So you surprised. Mm -hmm. 
you know, everyone just meets no matter what, especially in New York. Well, you know, Paul and I were saying those exact things before everybody hopped on here because, uh, you know, we, I know Lee, you actually knew Arn Star's dad back in the, yes, I did. In yeah. the day, oh, right? I did not know that. What? Yeah. Wow. And it comes out. Yeah. He was uh, arrested soul. He was an amazing, he was one of the original pioneering break dancers from way back. Uh, and uh, he had also, he had a, st a stage presence too, because he was just a very handsome, charismatic guy. And he could dance, he could throw the joints like everybody else. And, uh, you know, those guys were run running around town like a tornado. They were just like so hot. And now, I don't know if you guys know this, and I hope that they do some, you know, uh, some memorial to your father on Star. Break dancing is coming to the 2024 Olympics. Right. Yeah. Can you believe yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. What? I'm yeah. like, so happy for those guys, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's amazing. It's the way things have turned around for many of people that stood with it thick and thin. So that's wow. incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. I saw that Crazy Legs was was talking about it. Yeah, Crazy Legs was definitely um he's been talking about it for some years now, just like trying to make that a possibility. And now that it is yeah. and it's coming, that's gonna be powerful for just for the culture altogether. And um, you know, Lee, I thank you for remembering my father in such a light that uh, you say that he should be remembered um, at such a space because that really is the world stage right there, um, just set up. And, and, and the whole culture is getting elevated at this point. So if, if that tribute happens or take place, you know, just you saying that alone to me, it's already done. So thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Welcome, of course, of course. Yeah. Oh, you come from, uh... Of reality, I mean, I, you already mentioned some of your uh, your credits um, in working in different capacities, you know, in documentary and other projects. Yeah. Um, but primarily, you've made your bread and butter through directing some reality TV series. Um, I, I, as somebody mentioned before, how good the acting. I think Lee, you mentioned the quality of the acting here is kind of is pretty sophisticated. Mm -hmm. I. I'm that's another reason I was so pleased when I saw it because a lot of times you get people contacting you and you know you they send you their film and um and you know the acting's all over the place uh, um might have strengths but it's you know flaws like most films but what I was really pleased by was everybody was so good in this film everybody really acted everybody has chops and I you know uh, one of the mo best scenes was like the scene with grandma uh there was like a ser was it Shalay, was it your character? Was it Liza and her who were bonding? Or I can't re remember now. Oh, are you talking weeks. about when um when it, when she comes to the studio and then I'm yes. I'm teaching her how to like you know yes. move her body. Oh right, I love I I just love that scene because she comes out of herself there. You know, it's like everybody just sort of you know rises yeah. from the the from mm. this uh from this script. You know, it's like. Uh, Everybody, as you're watching the film, you're getting more into the relationships. The relationship between between Max, played by Arn Star, and Liza, played by Shirley, is so uh, credible. You know, yeah. they meet, and there's it just sort of doesn't rush into something. It eases into this romance, and by the time they spend the day together, you are so invested in them falling in love. That's it's beautiful. I don't how how did you coming from the background. You must have been, I'm guessing, this must have been a long thing in the works. Oh, a long thing. And, and a long time. thing with a lot of breaks. Yeah, I, you know, I wrote the first draft of this in the 90s when I was in school. And, uh, like, I always wanted to make movies. And, um, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I was a cameraman. Um, I came out of college and did camera work. But I, I always kept a hold of my scripts. And I said, I'm going to make my dream come true one day. And... And um, my, my whole thing was, I was just gonna stay out of the way. You, you cast the right people and you just, you know, you back off. And when, when an interesting story is with Arnstar and Shirley, we, we had just found Arnstar like the last day of, of casting and we didn't have Eliza. And so we had a few options. And so um, Arnstar came in and and auditioned with each one of them. And 
when they got together, the, it was electricity. They just lit up the room. Uh, Zan Ludlam, who, who did the casting, we looked at each other and we couldn't believe it. And Arnstar looked at me right away because he he left quickly and he was like, pick her, pick her. <laughs> they, they really, and I, and I still have the, the original casting tape. I think that was supposed to be under wraps. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, we've been telling the story. <laughs> yeah. We've been telling the story yeah. like, yeah, we've been, <laughs> it, it was, the chemistry was so loud. It, it was, was like, it I was, wouldn't even want to, it, it to be a mistake to be honest yeah. with you. I wouldn't even have wanted yeah. it to be like, oh yeah, you said three. I was like, no, pick. Yeah. Yo, look, yeah. I gotta go, but make sure but, she gets picked up, please. Ace. And, and the thing we were, you know, Thank you. um, yes, and we we were her schedule for the get down. We weren't sure because this is you know a smaller film, and we we're just trying to make the days. And her schedule was something we were working around, but they had just such such a connection and i mean you you guys are such friends now it's like so so strong and so deep you, you what you see on screen is a, is a real is a real connection yeah it's really organic like especially yeah. on the first day that we met it, it was like you know it's kind of one of those things that people talk about but you don't really know until you actually experience it in this case, it was through an audition, but it's like we've known each other or something where we just like connected and it was like, what is happening? We're just like both thrown into this this thing that like you just knew like and it was it was really, really like organic. And um, even when we hung out and we were on set and everything, it was so simple. It was just like you felt so comfortable and like confident in, in, in working with that person. And it just, and then Paul, like I have to give it to Paul too, because the way that Paul works as a director, right? Arn is like, yeah. he just backs off, like he says. And it's, and I think that is like the true strength of, of a really good actor director is to know the balance between giving and taking when it comes to like, um, directing or like you know guiding the actors and stuff he let us be us and play mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and it was just so so organic it was yeah. wonderful yeah it was yeah. really one of the best experiences I've had by far in my in my life and my career and stuff so I'm really grateful yeah if, if I if I may add to that I'm sorry um you're right, Shirley, um, and I'm sorry, like Paul kind of backs off and becomes sort of almost like a fly on the wall, just let it roll because he understands, and then you guys understand uh, this uh, self-immersed culture that we've been part of all our lives. We've heard it in the peripheral, we've experienced it right in front of our faces. So it's all very, you're very accustomed to it. And, you know, and, you know, I'm not saying that it came easy. I mean, acting is a very hard, uh, act in itself and feeling confident, but you're you're well versed in this whole culture, and I think um, uh, Paul signified that he, he showed that he was well versed too, and that he um, understood that we just need to be, you know, just free free ourselves to be what we naturally, organically are. So that's why it came out. I believe that's why everyone felt a good vibe across the film. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you for that. And what well, you know, it's interesting because reality, you know, I, I always say I come I work in competition reality, you know, it's shows where people have passion and people have like um something that a, a talent of some sort that they're that they're you know competing against others, but whether it's cooking or fashion. And I and I started when I started, I started on a show called The Real World. Um and what, that what year? Uh, this was 2000. I started okay. 2010. And as a camera operator on that show, like you, you don't really, you don't interact with the cast. And I don't know if they still do it like this. There's a line where you don't interact. So you do, it's, it's really fly on the wall. You know, it's cut together for MTV and how, but when you're following them for six months in say Paris, France, and you follow them and you film them, you learn quickly, like when you walk into a room, what's important? Who, what's this conversation really about? 
And I think that stuff has really stuck with me. And I think I try to, you know, narrow it down to, to just the basics when we're doing the scenes, like what is this really about? And then just let them run with it, you know? Mm, yeah. That's so nicely put. Yeah. Paul, for especially for any um, directors hearing this or any creators that really want to kind of get into that field, it's, it's a really nice way to like think about it and you know get perspective on it. Yeah, brilliant translation. To be honest, like um, thinking about it, the only reason why I was really confident to even step into a leading role, not ever have done one, is because I knew that there was a communication. Um, we had a communication, and you know, when we, when we sat down and we had that conversation after the initial audition and, um, and, and we really just got a chance to know who we are and what we're gonna, how we're gonna play a role in each other's lives before we even get into the film. I was like, okay, I can trust this guy. I could trust this man with my recognizance, with my understanding and allow him to just lead me to where I need to be. And funny thing is, you know, um, yeah, yeah, directing style is definitely, um, it's, it's definitely more in the creative perspective. And you gave me enough room to be myself while giving life to the character. So um, that, that big kudos for that, for sure. Yeah, and Adam, they all came with their, you know, it's, it was interesting that um, Arnstar, you know, he's, he's, um, when we met and he walked into the room, he is him, you know, he is, he's not really him, but he is someone that's positive, someone that's passionate, someone that's, um, that's, ha sees himself in a, in a place where he can, um, you know, share his passion with others on a bigger, on a bigger level. Um, and, and when, when we all met at that time, that's, I think everybody brought them to the role as well so same with you know uh joshua boone and and um you know the other characters as well and lee i just thought lee was um i had met lee on the subway on the c train oh and and lee we remain that was like you know 13 years ago or something like that and and we had stayed in contact and were friendly on you know texting or emailing and so forth and then I just thought he would fit, you know, it's such a New York story and just, you know, so I called him and see if he wanted to, to do it. And he, uh, he read the script. Well, I'll leave it to you. You know, he read the script and said he would, yeah, he's in. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I, uh, I, I read the script very quickly and, uh, I, I took, you know, I took note that I, I, uh, I grew up around DJs and DJ culture all my life. Uh, even the early, parts of breakdancing, which were called burning back in the early 70s. So what was uh, it called? It was called burning. Oh, yeah. Which was the same phrase that was used on the subway trains when you outdid someone or, out, or outstaged someone with one of your masterpieces. You just burned them off the map kind of thing. So on, on the dancing thing, it was like burn them off the carpet or whatever. But anyway, I grew up with DJs, uh, guys like Ice and Spanky in the Lower East Side and Apache um, and uh, Sir Gamble and uh, a number of like known guys that didn't really get up to the, to the highlights, um, but were instrumental in bringing this whole culture of, of vinyl earwax, if you want to call it, you know, into the masses. Um, so when I read the script, I was like, oh, this is right down my alley. I love this. This is there's a lot of things that I can, you know, uh, kind of uh, contribute. So, yeah, but it was it, it was great to to meet up with uh, Paul and then OnStar and um, you know and then see all these great talents come together. Did you just guys when you met on the C train? Did you just start a strike a conversation up as two strangers, or did you, Paul? Did you <laughs> know Lee's history and? Yeah, I, I want to know that story too. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I actually remember I remember it specifically because I, you know, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Wild Style. I love old school hip hop. And I was riding on the C train and I was like, I think that's Lee. And and wow. Lee, I, I just I approached you and I said, Are you Lee? And you said, Yes, I am. And we just started talking. And then you told me you were on your way to your studio. I believe at that time, maybe it was in Fort Greene, or maybe I'm mistaken. 
That was in fourth grade. Yeah. It was, yeah. And you and you gave me your email and said, let's stay in touch. And I told you that I work in TV. And then actually I ended up doing a, a Bravo show about artists called Work of Art. And I directed the show and they needed a judge for some street art. And this was uh, oh, wow. 2008, I believe. And so I said, you got to call Lee. And Lee came in and, and, and judged some street art. Yeah. 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 It's funny. I get a lot of that on the subways because people, Do you? You know, when they see someone that they know of or they know like through film where they're like, is that that guy? And they always, <laughs> always the same exact question. It's always like, yo, are you Dali? And, like, yeah, and they're like, oh my God. But it was just like, as you said, we, we struck it up right there. In fact, I think I might've told you, yeah, I don't drive around in black cars. I don't have, you know, stretch limos waiting for me out the door. You know, I, I still ride, I ride the subways. I want to be yeah. in the heart of New York, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was just glad it wasn't one of those moments where you go up to someone and say, are you? And then you're like, oh, I don't know who that is right before you go. You know, those moments. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only one of me, thank God. I mean, Jesus yeah. Christ. Anybody, anybody well, there's two. Can't... There's. You could argue there's two Charlies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there is. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Charlie corrected. Wild Style has a, a fraternal twin brother. He has a, a, a identical twin brother. Right. Who, uh, is, is pretty similar in a lot of ways to Charlie, actually. They, their whole body language and cadence is, is, okay. is identical, as well as their physical appearance. You know, they. Oh, my right? God. They, Tom? Uh, is it Tom? Know, no, it's John. John A. Johnny? John? Okay. Yeah, the way you could tell them both apart, though, because they're I mean, they're almost identical. Yeah. is how far each one is away from you when they're talking because they're so passionate. Oh, they're that's, right in your grill. That's funny. And I'm like, yeah, I get you, Charlie, and then John is even closer. <laughs> it's such a beautiful, passionate side that they have, and you can just you can't forget their blue eyes and their passion for their art and film. It's pretty amazing. Really great set of guys there. Yeah. Well, um, let's remind people the name of your film is called Wheels, and it's currently available. You can stream it right now. I mean, wait a few more minutes till we're done, and then talking to the viewers. Yeah, and the crowd. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and watch it. It's on, obviously, iTunes. Where else, Paul? Uh, a Amazon, Google Play. Um, usual suspects usual youtube yep. i saw it on youtube the other day i was like wow we, we can be found on youtube that's gonna make it so much easier right now like <laughs> did you say youtube oh yeah okay cool Beep. you go in rent <laughs> buy whatever you want to do and um, on your and phone yeah on your tv yeah. yeah um well again i was uh so glad that paul you know coordinated everybody and um because uh, it what what this ease in the in in the um, uh, of this whole situation here and the joy and the I can tell the chemistry among all of you guys, it comes from the film and it comes right here again and it, so it's a it's like a pleasure I could just sit back and I was enjoying just watching you guys and listening to you guys catch up and share memories of making the film, uh, and it's an intense film too. I mean, but there's a lot of um, it's an, it's like, you know, uh, it fits in, in the, tr in the, uh, uh, the, um, tradition of, you know, New York city stories, films that come out of New York, you know, it's, it's, there's drama, but there's comedy, there's romance, there's music, there's everything. It's right there, you know? Uh, so, um, I'm going to recommend it. I'm going to urge everybody to go see these guys in this film and, uh, that's all. And we'll, thank you so much, Adam. Yeah, my yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Know, you. Uh, you're welcome. It's nice Appreciate to meet everybody. And uh, we'll come back. We'll do Wheels 2. Uh, hey. Hey. <laughs> Paul, told you what I say. <laughs> Wheels the series. Oh, that's right. Of course. You know, I, you know, I I, I uh, reached out to, to to a few of my favorite DJs uh, just recently. Uh, DJ Spinner, uh, mm -hmm. 
uh, Rich Medina, uh, yeah. uh, Bobito. And I said to them, oh, remember wow. that song? Remember that song, a DJ, uh, what was it? I forget, the DJ that saved- uh, uh, DJ Saved My Life? Yeah, DJ Saved My Life. I said, listen, you guys are gonna be so instrumental, literally. Um, and when we come out of this, um, you know, this uh, dark hole that we're in right now, that music is really going to save the day and set the pace for a new bright horizon. And there's no better, it's just the way we came out of the 70s, early 70s, post Vietnam in New York, the club scene was combustible like no other. And I know that it came from hard times. And here we are, even though it's been one year, it's been almost like 10 years it feels because of yeah. life, the loss of, of uh, privileges and, and opportunities. And I think people are just going to rejoice with music. And I'm like, you DJs got the, you better have the finger on the pulse and on that vinyl because that's what's gonna, and I think the, the, the film like this lends to that. You know, I, I think that it, it, it's a good, it, it speaks volumes. And I hope that that's the case, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nice. absolutely. Absolutely, Lee. Let's let's dance, Lee. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to just mention any any way people can also follow the film? Is it um, or you any of you guys, uh, in case people want to uh, follow you or reach out or something? Sure. It's um it's at it's at the Wheels Film on Instagram and it's uh, thewheelsfilm.com. So e either there and uh, you'll find us. Yes. I can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you can guys. find us all on that page. Like, I'm, you know, we're yeah. all yeah. like uh, tagged on yeah. there. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Yep. You can okay. Mm -hmm. Well, and we'll put the, uh, we'll put the description of the story. I know we didn't go into great detail in terms of everybody's characters and the the storyline so much but once you know the story so this could this could also work people can like go if they're curious they watch this they can go jump and go see the movie now or this is a nice bonus thing uh, uh after the film so if you if you put this on a on a on a blu-ray or a dvd or something yeah or some you know, this could this could be a feature at just saying absolutely yeah <laughs> you know yeah. it's happened before anyway Guys, it's really nice to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Keep safe, and uh, um, you know we'll all be celebrating in a, in a year from now. Uh, you know, in, in person. Yes. 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 Hopefully. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Adam. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much for this. My pleasure. Yeah. This You're is amazing. Hey, 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 Paul. Can can I get that twenty dollars you still owe me? Uh, ah! I, I, my wife's calling me. So <laughs> <laughs> but I thought art was free. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs>